Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some more Pittsburgh Steelers tape breakdown and analysis. We're going to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers today. Three critical play calls in the second half that did not work out, that contributed heavily to the Steelers' upset loss to the Patriots. Let's talk about it. Before we begin, if you guys could like this video, also subscribe to the channel, would really appreciate that. Also in the description of this video, I'm going to drop a link to a full film room that our Jonathan Hightrader did on Mitch Trubisky to evaluate his play. So if you're wondering why there is no complete breakdown of Trubisky in this video, we already covered it for Steelers Depot in depth. And that'll be linked in the description below. I just want to talk about kind of weigh in on my thoughts on really three crucial play calls that may have defined Pittsburgh's season. First one comes uh, fourth and two, Pittsburgh driving down 21 to 10, Mike Tomlin opting against the field goal, going for the you know touchdown, the conversion here to try to make it a one possession game, or at least a closer one possession game than what a, a field goal would have given you. And there's Two elements to this. One, you can see what Pittsburgh was going for. It looks like tight end Pat Frymuth, the uh, the Y here in this 3 by one formation. I do like putting Deontay inside in these situations to let him run the full route tree. Um, you know, they've been working kind of these curls underneath the Frymuth throughout the game, and you're getting that look here. It looks like he wants to run just a, like a Hank concept, an over-the-ball route, and you get the linebacker that kind of knocks him off, and so he kind of, you know, options in works off leverage to the outside, and that does open up. But from Trubisky's point of view, and we'll see it better from the end zone view right here, whenever he's looking at Frymuth, well, initially as the primary, maybe he's targeting him here. It's a little hard to tell exactly where his eyes are at. He's kind of caught up in all this traffic with uh, the linebacker, Bentley, number two, the DB, and so he comes off of that, and then he goes to, to Jalen Warren on this one and just trying to get the ball out to, to let somebody have a chance at making the play. But you see Frymuth come open as he works off leverage there and kind of returns to the outside. So, you know, I get what Pittsburgh was going for. But to me, fourth and two, you need two yards. Need a better concept to really work and get two yards. Again, routes being a little too independent of each other. You're getting the seam here from Deontay. Robinson on the curl is kind of a smash seam look, and then backside you're going to maybe attack leverage here if you like the matchup if you're Trubisky, but just try to work something that gets you the two yards. you got to have a got-to-have-it type play where you're, you know, specifically whether it's the concept on a rub or something that's going to get you two yards, something that puts a defender in conflict. They kind of get that with Fryermuth here, but then Trubisky comes off it because it's not open initially. I think Trubisky could have stayed on this longer or not try to immediately run and kind of get the pass rush really, you know, heated up towards him that caused him to flip it to Jalen Warren. So I just would have liked a better play call here, fourth and two in such a critical moment. I want a better play in this instance. Then we go to the third and two and fourth and two with around two minutes to go. And at, at first and still partially, I'm not loving these play calls overall from Eddie Faulkner, the interim OC, and Mike Sullivan, the new play caller, taking over for... Matt Canada, but watching it back, I mean, they were there. I mean, you can debate, you know, could they run the ball on third and two ahead of the two minute warning and you either get it or you don't. And you take that two minute warning to really talk about it, come up with your best play. But these things are this is the third and two play going to work here. Just this, we call it a dragon concept, slant flat here to the top to the boundary. So pretty short throw. You're going to get Johnson in the flat, Pickens on the slant, and you're getting this rub that's created. The the linebacker has to, or excuse me, the DB31 in this case has to work over the top of it. And Johnson's open in the flat. It's there. It's not going to get you a bunch of yards. It's going to get you two yards, though. And that's what you need on third and two. But Trubisky, he wants the slant instead. Talked about after the game that Pickens' angle was different than he expected. This one sails uh, wide and incomplete. It, that is also there to be hit. But I think if you're Trubisky, again, you're reading the slant flat and seeing, you know, it's over the top here, the way the DB has to work through this one, that's two yards. I think you got to hit that if you're Trubisky. I mean, we're, we're just playing for two yards here, get another 10 yards off of that. You're going to be in makeable Chris Boswell range. And so why go for the slant that's going to be a bit harder of a throw when the flat is open? I just don't understand the process in the read from Trubisky. And again, it kind of goes back to his, let me take the more aggressive and riskier and higher reward play 
but the more aggressive and riskier uh, option. And this one falls incomplete. All right, now we go to the fourth and two, the deep ball to Deontay Johnson. Let me just run it through the whole way, and then we'll talk about it. And, you know, again, home run ball, fourth and two. You know, it's not even like if you convert this and it's a 30-yard completion, you're guaranteed to win the game. If it's something where if you hit this, you're going to win the game, there's a better argument to be, to be made for that. But you could still easily stall out and kick a field goal and, and be in a tie game situation. Now, obviously, you're in more makeable range and, you know, your your chances of tying the game at the least are going to go up dramatically. But still, just the, the risk calculation from Trubisky. And, you know, Mike Tomlin after the game said this was the design. I'm not sure if that's entirely truthful. You have different options and progressions. And again, what you see here is Allen Robinson working underneath Pat Fryermuth, and you're kind of creating that rub there that's, you know, being able to, to get separation for your receiver, and it's there. It's going to be a tight window throw, and Robinson's probably going to take a shot, but he's made that play a bunch of times this season. So we talked about that first example, that fourth and two on the flip to Warren. You're not really scheming somebody open with a rub or a pick or something like that. You're doing that here, to their credit, and I didn't really fully see that or realize that live. I knew Robinson was running underneath on some sort of maybe option route, but this is probably less of an option route, more of a design underneath the rub. And you got Trubisky throwing the one-on-one -on -one to the outside. Now his, you know, interpretation is it's single high, you know, middle of the field closed. They got the outside open, but it's fourth and two. Your season is on the line and just get two yards. And so from the end zone view, you're seeing Frymuth run vertically and again, kind of like that slant flat concept we just looked at, the DB has to work over the top. And that's there. I mean, that is there for Trubisky. Now, again, that DB may come down. And if there's a little more, if Trubisky waits too long, the linebacker might come across and, and hit Robinson. But he's made some of those tough contested catches. He doesn't have a bunch of catches and his yards per catch is under eight, I'm pretty sure. But he has made plays on third and fourth down over the middle on these types of concepts. So that is there for Trubisky. And so why take the risk of the home run ball down the left side that does not even guarantee you or put you in clear position to win? Even if you hit it, at that point, you still may reasonably end up in a tie by kicking a field goal. I just don't get the calculation. And that's my issue with Trubisky overall is, you know, he's openly admitted he wants to be aggressive. He likes to be aggressive. And when it works, that's great. But too often in his career, and particularly in Pittsburgh, it hasn't in the way the Steelers are constructed. They really can't afford the risk that Trubisky continually takes, whether that's leading to missed reads on you know, crucial possession downs or interceptions like the one early in the game, which there's some nuance to that. You could blame Frymuth to it, uh, for it to an extent. But you know, fourth and two, let's get two yards. Let's hit this underneath. That's the design. It's probably the intent of the play. If you get if you're getting man coverage, that's what you're going to hit. If you're getting zone, that you know rub may not be available, so you're going to work something else in all likelihood. Um, and I just don't understand, you know, the idea. You're getting the look that you want. You're getting a man clue by motioning Robinson across. DB twenty seven follows. It's going to signal, not guarantee, but signal man coverage. That's going to be the primary. And if it's not there, then okay, work something else. But to me, that's there. It might not be the easiest catch Robinson has ever made in his life, but it's one he's capable of making, and he's, and he's proven that. So um, to me, I'm going to give a little more grace to the play call and put a little more heat on Trubisky for, I think, that risk meter being broken, given the situation. You get two yards here, pick up the first down, you get 10 more yards, you got a shot to kick a long field goal, but Boz had just made him 56. That would have been good from probably 60-plus uh, earlier in this game. So, you know, there's there's nuance and you know, an issue with play calling to an extent in some of these moments. Um, but to me, these last two plays in particular that we're looking at before the final couple of plays when the game was essentially over, uh, these things are open. And Trubisky is taking the more aggressive and lower percentage route, and it really cost Pittsburgh. All right, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Appreciate you guys listening. Again, check out the full Film Room Breakdown from our Jonathan Hightrader in the link in the description below. Please like this video. Please subscribe. Thank you again, and we'll talk to you soon.